Welcome everyone, I'm Bakari Howard to this very special episode of Falcon Tire Tech. Today, I have Drew Howley with me. He's our product manager for light truck and SUV. And today we have a very special topic. Drew, we're gonna be talking about why Load Range F is so important. So let's start with the basis and what load range F means. The first thing is, let's talk about what a load range is. It means basically that it's a range of loads at a specified tire pressure that the tire can actually carry. So for example, on a light truck tire, typically you'll see load range C or load range D or load range E on the sidewall. And each of those letters corresponds to a range of loads that the tire is capable of carrying and at a specified pressure as well. So typically that load range C, for example, carries a range of loads at 35 to 50 PSI, D up to 65 PSI, E up to 80 PSI. So speaking of load range, is it safe to say, you know, a load range E from what I understand is 10 ply, so would a load range F be a 12 ply? That's safe to say in a sense because in the past we compared and classified tires by a ply rating. So typically uh, we would say a tire is 6 ply rated eight ply rated or 10 ply rated, and those corresponded to C, D, and E respectively. So of course, a, an F uh, load range does correspond to a 12 ply rating. Now, is it actually like 12 plies or 10 plies laid out when the tire is manufactured? That's another really good question. And the 12 ply rating doesn't actually mean that the tire has 12 different plies or 12 layers. Um, it's really just a way to classify the tire and ensure that the manufacturer tested it to meet that 12 ply rating okay. and or that load range F. There's, a, there's much more stringent testing requirements when it comes to things like um, endurance and high speed testing and all the safety testing that a tire manufacturer does. Uh, those requirements are a lot more stringent um, as you move up in the load range, especially with the load range F. Do load range tires also have a load index? Because I see on this particular tire it says 125 and that's technically a load index, right? That's correct. So every tire, regardless of whether it's a light truck or a passenger tire, is going to have a load index. And that load index is, no, is nothing more than just a abbreviation for an equivalent load carrying capability or capacity in pounds or kilograms. So each load index number has a weight carrying capacity associated with it. Gotcha. So with your light truck specific tires, you'll essentially have almost two designations. You'll have a range and then you'll have the three digit number. Typically, that's more of an index. Correct. And that index will be the exact maximum load carrying capability of that tire. Going back to load range F, like why, why is there a need for that? Why does that even exist? There are two basic overlying trends that have kind of posed the need for load range F in today's market. So I think the first trend really is if you look back at three quarter ton and one ton pickups over the past 20 years, I'm talking about the Ford F-250, Ram 2500. Okay. These vehicles have gotten significantly heavier over the years. Which makes sense, new technologies, things people want more, right? Exactly, more power, bigger diesel engines, more carrying capacity, more towing capacity. Touch screens. Uh, yeah, let's not even mention the electronics and all the safety features that these vehicles have today. So a typical GVWR for say a Ram 2500 or an F250 today would be about 10,000 pounds. And that means everything you have in the pickup bed and everything you have inside, all of your kids in the back, fully loaded, that's the maximum amount that you can carry legally in that vehicle. Now, if I have a truck, where would I find this at on the vehicle so I can know what my GVWR is at? Inside the driver door, if you open up your driver door, typically you'll find a sticker, what we call a door placard, which states both the GVWR as well as the tire information. All right, Drew, you gave us a lot of information on that, but you also mentioned there's two reasons why load range F exists. So what's the other reason why it exists? Bakari, the, the answer really is right behind us. The, the trend of aftermarket larger tires. 35, 12, 50, 20. Exactly. I mean, with a simple leveling kit, a lot of these modern trucks can fit a 35, 12, 50, 20 with it a slight so suspension. It, it does, yeah. and we understand the trend. but. I think from the manufacturer point of view, we need to make sure that these aftermarket larger tire sizes, they have the proper load index that meets or exceeds the original equipment tire load index as well. So, you know, for example, we talked about this tire having a load index of 125. 
we need to make sure that that tire actually has the same or higher load index as the OE tire. And you know, for example, in a Ram 2500, a typical size would be an LT275 7018 with a load index of 125 and a load range E. And we would be able to match that with a load range F offering in a 35 12 50 20, also with a load index of 125. So Drew, what you're saying is if my vehicle came from the factory with a 125 load index tire, I need to replace that tire with a 125 as well if I want to plus size and get new wheels? Well, not technically. What I'm saying is that is the best rule of thumb. You're completely safe if your aftermarket tire has a load index that is the same or higher than your OE load index tire. There are always exceptions to the rule though. For example, if the OE tire had a load index of 125, as, as you stated as an example, had an OE pressure at say 50 PSI, it is possible that you could use an aftermarket tire with a lower load index, but you would likely have to increase the pressure of the aftermarket tire. So each tire carries a specific load at a specific pressure. So it's important to familiarize yourself with load inflation tables and be able to match the OE load carrying capacity at the OE pressure to the aftermarket tire, its load carrying capacity at its aftermarket pressure. So it is possible. Load inflation chart, like where can someone find that and what is that? So you can find the load inflation chart typically on our website or in our print uh, Falcon data book. And that's a really great resource because you can find each tire load carrying capability for a given pressure and load index. I think I've seen one of these before. You could essentially match up the PSI and then figure out that particular index and how much weight the tire can carry at that pressure. Exactly, and then that way you can always match the load carrying capacity of your aftermarket tire to your OE tire. And Bakari, that's something that we really need to talk about because it's important. The OEMs, uh, meaning the, the manufacturer of the vehicle, they designed each pickup truck, for example, with a specific OE tire that has a, a safety margin associated with it. So we talked about GVWR and how a vehicle can weigh 10,000 pounds. Typically what you'll find is the four tires that support that vehicle can carry more than 10,000 pounds, and that's by design. So this is why it's really important. We don't want to use a lower load carrying capability on our aftermarket tires than the OE tires because there is a safety margin already designed into those four tires that will respect uh, original equipment on the vehicle. But what about the exception you talked about? Even with the exception, the exception still will have the same load carrying capability even if you do have to increase the inflation pressure slightly. And again, that's important. You have to match that same load carrying capacity of all four tires as the OE because again, there is a factor of safety that was built into the vehicle to make sure that the occupants and payload can be carried safely. So basically what you're saying, the most important part is being equal to or greater than. Regardless of how we get there, we can either get there with having a tire that has the equivalent load rating on the replacement side or by doing it by air pressure on a lower index tire. That's correct. To make it simple, if you don't want to go down the technical details and frustration of these load inflation tables, the easiest and safest way is to make sure that the aftermarket load index matches the original equipment load index. Drew, we went over a lot of information today. If, if someone has more questions on the topics we went over, where maybe can they go as a resource? Honestly, our website has tons of technical information on it. For each of our product lines, you can find all of our technical specifications, such as the load index, load carrying capacity, max pressure, all of those things we talked about today. We also have the load inflation tables on our website that you can refer to, as well as all of our contact information if there are still questions. Drew, thanks for being on today. I think our viewers learned a lot. Thanks for having me, Bakari. Well, that's it for now. Until next time.